second stanza and fifth stanza of our entrance in Abraham. Fast bound in Satan's chains I lay, death brooded darkly over me. Sin was my torment night and day, and sin my mother bore me. But daily deeper still I fell, my life became a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. God said to his beloved son, it's time to have compassion. Then go, bright jewel of my crown, and bring to all salvation. From sin and sorrow set them free. Slay bitter death for them that they may live with you forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> It's no doubt that we can be in chains in the midst of this life that we live. Every day, we wake up, we work, we come home, we go to sleep, and we do it all over again. It's easy to get bogged down in the world. It's easy to get bogged down in repetition. It's easy to get bogged down even in disaster, tragedy, and the like. These things bind us to the earth, bind our minds, and we begin to believe that this is all that there is. These bounds that we have are known as doubts that are placed in our minds. They are deceitful things that we place in our memories, and we see that sin bogs us down all the more. Every Reformation, as we come to Reformation Day, I always have this picture of someone who is bound literally in chains, who's lifting up from the earth with their eyes towards heaven, with their mouths screaming out, Lord have mercy upon me, but they're bound to the earth, and Satan is the one who holds the chains. This image that I constantly have is one that I know is there because of sin. Sin is that which binds us to the earth. Sin is that which binds us. And yet, the person in my mind is looking up, screaming that someone would have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in, bo I'm in bounds. I am in chains, fetters, as Luther calls them. And then looking up and screaming, God hears what we have to scream about. Lord, have mercy on me. The number one prayer that I pray every single day, many times a day, is this. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. That simple phrase, over and over and over again. And in that simple prayer, we find that those chains that hold us kind of slip through the fingers of the devil. Why? Because our faith is not in ourselves and our faith is not in our situation. And that is one thing that I want to make sure that I point out today particularly. In our situation, whatever it may be, it cannot define who we are. Each one of us we find in a different situation but I guarantee that in every single one of those situations, we find that the devil is near. When we hurt, the devil is there, is there to say, see, this is what happens when you put your trust in that Jesus. When we are bogged down in our day-to-day -day monotony, Satan is there to say, see, it's the same old thing. Do you really want to put your trust in that Jesus? Even worse, when tragedy happens, when we bury those whom we love, 
Satan is there all the more to say, see, do you really want to put your trust in that Jesus who would take away your loved ones? And finally, when we get bogged down in our own sin, when our sin holds us to the ground and Satan pulls those chains back one by one and says, see, your sin captures you, it holds you, and I, you get closer and closer and closer to me. And that grip on the chain, Satan just grabs a hold of. In those chains, we find that we are absolutely helpless. It seems that those chains pull, that, that, that Satan pulls those chains harder every single day until we are left back, back, and back further and further and further until we cry out to God, Lord, have mercy upon me. Why do you leave me in such a situation? Uh, one that hurts me so badly. And Christ says to us, do you not know that it is because you are set free that the devil attacks you so? Those bonds, those bounds, they're in our minds. Those bounds that pull us. It's not Satan. It's the illusion that Satan gives to us. That he actually has power over us. He has, he tempts us. But he's not the one that holds the chains. The chains that actually hold on to us, that pull us further and further and further away from this life, they're not connected to the hands of Satan, they're connected to the wounds of Christ. And as long as those chains are connected to the wounds of Christ, we have the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. This is what Luther wanted the people to know. You are not bound by the piece of paper that you buy. You are not bound by anything outside of being bound to Jesus. And I would rather be a slave in the house of God my Father. Change of Christ. Luther found this in the Gospel. We are saved by grace through faith. And as long as we are bound to Christ by grace through faith, Satan can have nothing to do with us. Yes, again, he can tempt us over and over and over. But at the end of the day, it's Christ who stands nose to nose with the devil and tells him to go back to hell, to leave us alone. This life is not perfect. It's not going to be perfect. And I certainly will not stand up here and give you false hope of a perfect life. But I can tell you this. The one that watches over your life is perfect. He is Christ Jesus our Lord. And we know Him by the Gospel. And if we know the Gospel, we have been set free. We are free indeed. If we abide in Christ's Word, truly we are His disciples and we will know that truth. And that truth will set us free. So those bounds do not go backwards to the devil. They go upwards into heaven. Imagine chains from the wounds of Jesus that daily pull us closer and closer to Him. We know the truth. Christ Jesus came and gave us the gospel that is Him. And when He gave us the gospel, yes, it was held captive for a while in Rome, but Luther re-gifted the gospel. He gave it back to the people and said, this is free. This is for you. Where this is free, you are free. And where you are free, you are free indeed. And there's nothing more free than being enslaved to Jesus. What sweet sweet iron that we're truly free when we're bound to Christ. And so, every day when we wake up, especially the days when we wake up, and it takes 
everything we've got to put one foot out from the bed and the other foot out from the bed and to stand up and to face the day, knowing that the devil will be nipping at our heels. Know this. That's all it's got. That's what makes up his attack. Like a small dog nipping at the heels. That's all he has. Because he's not the one holding the chains. It's Christ. It's Christ that chains us to him. And in those chains, we realize that they're not made of metal. They're made of the gospel. As long as those chains are made of the gospel, this life, in all of its controversy, in all of its pain, in all of its seemingly unnecessarily wickedness, you know this. Soon, by those beautiful gospel chains, we will be in heaven with Christ Jesus. Soon. Lord, soon. Come quickly so that we may all be with you in heaven. Amen. And now may the peace that surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever.